Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here with College Center. In today's training, we're taking a look at some of the knife basic skills, so that way we can start improving our knife handling. Let's go ahead and get to the training. All right, before we get started here, if you're brand new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, and uh, if you carry a knife with you, if you train with the knife, if you enjoy the knife, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button real fast. And let's go ahead and get right into the training. So I want to give you a couple of uh, kind of basic principles and movements and things with the knife. Just kind of kicking it off, let's go through some of the basic movements with the knife, some of the basic techniques. So from here, we're going to go cover our cuts first, our slashes first. We have our diagonal angle one, our diagonal downward angle two. We can come across horizontal, across horizontal, and then on that vertical. So this is covering those different angles of slashes. You have diagonal slashes, horizontal slashes, and then vertical slashes. So we have our one, our two, our forehand horizontal, our backhand horizontal, and we have our vertical cuts right there. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And those are great basic cuts to start off with. Then we can go right into our thrusts. Now there's a lot of different thrusts. There's a lot of ways that we can manipulate the knife. But the basic ideas or the basic principles is that we have a thrust that comes up the center line, we have a thrust on the backhand side, and we have a thrust on the forehand side right here. So we can thrust on the center line, the backhand, and the forehand right there. So if we start kind of putting those together, we can move this from our slashes directly into our thrusts right there. Okay, so we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight movements already just right there with the knife, just covering these basics. All right, so we have our cuts and our thrusts. And these are all fluid motions right here. As you're advancing with your training, you can go into your broken motions. Okay, you can go into your circular motions. You have your fluid thrust, you can go broken, you can even go circular with your thrusts. You know, there's a lot of different energies that we can start implementing as well. So that way we can start navigating the space a little bit differently. One of the things about uh, the knife, or really anything, any weaponry in Kali, is you know, it's really, really gonna be difficult to disarm a Kali practitioner when they really understand what they're doing and they have high skills, proficient skills. And the reason for that is we're training, you know, when we train, we understand the offense side of it, but we also understand the counter offensive side of it. And then we start learning the recounters to the counters. And basically the idea is when you're proficient with the knife, you should be so good that nobody could ever get to your hand. No one can ever take the knife from your hand. They can't even get to your hand. All right, so that's the idea. That's what we're looking to, uh, the level of proficiency, the level of skill that we're looking to achieve. Especially when you start adding in your footwork and understanding the manipulations and all that, you can really start advancing your skill and not get your hand captured by your opponent. And that's really what we want to uh, accomplish in skill. All right, so we have our, our basic cuts, just understanding the basic ideas of angles, diagonal, horizontal, and verticals. And we have those basic thrusts, the basic ideas of thrusts, the center line, the backhand, and the forehand. Now the third tactic that we have that's a very good solid basic tactic to have is our jab. This is just coming out with a very quick kind of flick of the knife and we're looking to hit with this little corner right here, right, right where the blades, the edges, and the tip of the knife meet. You know, and that typically goes right for the eyes. Uh, sometimes we can go for the hand or what. It's not going to be you know, as effective as cutting or thrusting the hand, but right, it's be a means for positioning but otherwise the jab primarily is going right into the eyes and you look you take that corner right there and once you put it in the eye it kind of finds its way and uh, it's a pretty nasty shot so we basically have nine movements that we could train starting off or beginning your knife training we have our downward diagonal slashes one and two our forehand and backhand cuts our vertical our center line thrust backhand thrust forehand thrust and that quick jab. Now the cool thing with this is that we can flip over the knife into the reverse grip. When you're holding the reverse grip it doesn't really matter at this point if you want the blade edge on the inside or on the outside. The most important thing is that the thumb caps the knife. 
you gotta make sure the thumb is on top of the knife, especially when you're using like a folding knife, a pocket knife, it doesn't have a hand guard. You don't wanna thrust something and then the knife stops but your hand keeps going and then your hand runs the blade. And so you cap the knife, that's gonna help keep that knife secured in the grip. So we can go through the exact same movements but the tactics just kinda of switch. So we have our thrusting, one, two, three, four, and five, and then we can come into our cuts, especially you know when you're here, blade edge is on the outside, you can come out through your cuts, and then you have that jab, but now in the reverse grip, it's more like a direct thrust. Pop, right there. But again, it's a quick, you know, just like a boxer's jab, boom, it's just very fast, stick the jab out, get it back real quick, same exact thing. As you can tell, right, these thrusts are a little bit more solid thrusts, but that jab is very, very fast. Same thing here. Thrust, thrust, thrust. Quick jab right there. Uh, so make sure to work that out. And guys, even if you're in the blade edge on the inside, uh, these start working like elbows and you're looking to rake with that, uh, with that top, you know, little bit of a thin part of that blade going right into the tip. Uh, sometimes you might even have a little bit of an edge right there or a false edge right there. Guys, it's still, when you're going right to the eyes like that, it's still going to do some damage, you know? Like, a lot of people think that it's not going to do anything. Um, still does some damage. Plus, when you're working this stuff out, you know, you do that, you get that reaction, boom, and then you got that quick jab that goes right directly into the face. So, it's, uh, it is very effective still, even when the blade edge is on the inside. You got to train it. You just have to train it. That's, that's what you have to do. You know, we can theorize, we can think about this stuff and theorize all that we want. But at some point, you gotta train it. And then you gotta get with some training partners and you gotta train with training partners. You gotta take the gear off, you gotta take the fencing masks off, and you gotta see how do people actually react to it. And if they don't move, unfortunately sometimes in training, they get hit. Just drop the strike a little bit, hit them down here, not across the eyes. But you're still gonna get a reaction out of it. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine right there. Again, it doesn't matter if it's on the Pakal grip or on the Sock Sock grip, right? Forward grip right here. Same movements. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine right there. That's one of the beautiful things about Kali. It's the same movements. It doesn't really matter. And then I can pick up any knife or any small object that can, I can grab and grasp my hand and I can operate it the exact same way. Now, one of the things I want to show you guys, once you have that kind of mini form down, Let's look at some of the basic principles of the knife. And uh, let's go ahead and go to Bob so that way we can check this out. All right, so I got my man Bob here, Dirty Bob right here. And uh, we're gonna be looking at some of the basic principles with a knife. Obviously we can work that basic form, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine right there. Now, those thrusts can go to multiple targets, right? The center line thrust, anywhere up the center line, to the groin, to the uh, abdomen or the abdominal aorta, right to the plexus, right to the throat, right to the face. They can go anywhere. Same thing with the, uh, with the backhand and the forehand, right? We can come out right through between the ribs to so take that lung out. We can go right up underneath the armpit to that brachial artery. We can go right to the neck, go right to the temple. So you can change up those targets. We're not really concerned with the targets right now, we're more concerned with the principles of the angles at this point in our training. Same thing when it comes to the, uh, the forehand side right here. Okay? But one of the most important things, and then that jab, bam, right there, right to, right to the eyes, right to the face, boom. Just go right for that nose, boom, pop, right there. And same thing if we're in that reverse grip, boom, right there, pop, pop, pop. Even if you miss the eyeball and you hit the cheekbone or what, you know, usually nine, nine out of ten times, or 9.9 .9 out of ten times, it, uh, it stops somebody. And if they don't stop, it at least slows them down. Pop! Right there. I don't know how many people take too many direct thrusts right to the face. Um, but one of the main principles with the knife is that we have to understand how the knife actually operates. And it can cut, it can thrust, it can jab. But we want to make sure that our tactics, we want to train our tactics to be seamless. So one of the main things is that we got to remember that every cut every slash becomes a thrust every slash becomes a thrust slash to thrust slash to thrust slash to thrust and every thrust 
becomes a slash. So even if I was to thrust here, I can cut. I thrust, I cut. I thrust, I cut. I thrust, I cut. So we want to be training our knife handling skills so we can understand the mechanics and handle the weapon safely. But then we also need to make sure that we're training our technical transition skills, you know, making sure that we are building these principles and putting them seamlessly together and transitioning between our tactics. So one of the basic drills is go ahead and thrust to the armpit and you slash right across, you know, right below that waistline. Thrust to the armpit and slash. Thrust, slash. Thrust, slash. Thrust, slash. Thrust, slash. Then you come up to the top. You thrust right to the temple, slash the neck. Up to the temple, slash the neck. Okay? So these could be small movements like this. Then you're gonna thrust right to the eye and then slash right below the waistline again. Thrust and slash. Basically, you're opening all this up and the intestines and everything just kind of fall out. Kind of gross, but you know. Hopefully you never have to actually do this stuff in real life and you can just train the martial arts and uh, you know, have fun with it. And uh, just, you know, stay on the, uh, in the world of pretend. But if you have to ever really use this stuff, then, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it works out for you. Okay. But boom, you can start working all this stuff. Okay. Boom. Bop. Okay. It's very hard to thrust here and then slash up, right? A lot of times we thrust high and then we cut low. So if he's coming in to try to take this hand or try to block or anything like that, we turn this thing into the cut and we either slash their hand or you change that target line so that way they cannot make contact to your hand or form or anything like that. So you gotta be quick, you gotta be vigilant, right? you gotta have good visual acuity so you can see and follow the lines of your opponent. And uh, that's one of the really good drills. The second drill is we're just gonna reverse that. So we're gonna go slash the thrust or cut the thrust. So cut right down the face, right between the uh, eyes, right to the bridge of the nose, and then thrust up the armpit. Same thing on the other side. Thrusting right down the bridge of the nose, right between the eyes, and then thrust up the armpit. So slash and thrust, slash thrust, slash thrust, slash thrust, slash thrust, right there. Right there. Now you can also obviously slash to the neck and then thrust right to the, uh, you know, any of those select targets right there. But we typically don't like slash to the chest or anything like that. I mean, yeah, it makes someone bleed, but it may not be enough to really stop somebody when you slash them, you know, at the chest, especially when the adrenal state is going, you're in, you know, tight, maybe you're at, you know, short range, close range. You want to make sure that you are going to targets that are really going to give you the maximum bang for your buck right there. And sometimes that torso, even though it's a lot of meat, it just may not be enough. You know, the, it's, it's not a bolo that we're talking about where it's going to like completely shatter that rib cage, you know, and get down into the heart and the lungs and, and all that good stuff. Um, so we want to make sure that we are striking to targets that matter and that are going to you know, do maximum amount of, uh, of damage and give us the best reaction possible. So boom and pop. Okay. You can also come down that vertical and then thrust the vertical. Pop. Right, so it's all on that center line. Boom, right there. So just start playing around. Those are some basic drills, basic you know, tactical drills that you can do to start blending your tactics of slash and your tactic of thrust and you can start blending those things together. And then we'll come back, we'll start adding in the jab and we'll start working in some other drill combinations and things like that. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you train this stuff in the air as well. So that way you can learn to really control your weapon. And then you wanna make sure you're doing some kind of targeting or impact training as well, right? So that way now you can really start building that hand-eye coordination and start really identifying where those targets are at. And Try to stay on the targets. Don't miss the targets. So work this stuff out. Great knife handling skills. If you're a beginner, even if you're an intermediate or an advanced collie practitioner, you gotta go back and you gotta train the basics. You know, all these functional martial arts out there, it's not the martial art that's functional. It's the practitioner that can make that information functional. So you have to go and do the training. Just because it's functional for somebody else and it might work for somebody else or they might think that it works for them, 
uh, it doesn't mean it's gonna just automatically work for you. You still have to go and do the actual training and you have to make it functional. Make it a functional, combative, practical martial art. Right? It's, it's never functional and practical just by default and then like, just because that teacher seems like you know they can fight and they can you know handle themselves and handle any situation ever uh, with their martial art and they're teaching you or you're learning from them, it doesn't mean that that's automatically all those attributes and everything to actually pull it off doesn't mean that it's going to work out for you. You got to do the training, you got to do the the homework. It's not the art, it's the individual. Okay, so work that out and uh, play around. Bob, and just have some fun. If you don't have a bob, use a heavy bag, put uh, little pieces of tape that would signify the target. You can do the same thing with a tire stack, a pole, it doesn't really matter. You're just getting an idea of where these targets are at, and then you can start playing around with the drills, mixing up the drills, and we'll come back and I'll give you guys some more advanced drills and stuff that you can do, and how you can start mixing everything up and really get this knife moving, all right? So if you like this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button or thrust that thumbs up button for me real quick. And again, if you're brand new to the channel or you've been watching for a while and you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button for me. It really does help me out when you guys are showing me that kind of support. I really do appreciate it and the whole Collie Center team appreciates it. And if you want to continue your training on the knife, if you want the best knife fighting course that's out there with weapon handling drills and forms and footwork and close quarter counter offense and understanding the attacks of the knife and closing that distance, long range to close quarter, back out, all this really is a full knife fighting program, head over to colliecenter.com and go check out our knife fighting course that we have right on over there. I believe we're, there's a little bit of a sale going on on it right now as well, so grab it while you can while it's uh, at that reduced price. And uh, check out becoming a sponsor to the channel. Just click the join button right below this video and you can check out becoming a sponsor and you get to train with us with all those extra exclusive training videos that we have right here on YouTube, but it's only available to our sponsors to our channel. And then I'll catch you back here next time for some more Kali training. Leave me a comment below, share this video with all your martial arts friends, and let's get everybody in the world training some Kali.